This is such a gift out here today, this time of year. It is like 43 degrees out. Our snow is melted enough where it's not real fine and powdery like it is when it's cold, where it'll get up in my, um, the brick, the receiver. Should uh, just kind of land on top of the snow now. It's a little bit crusty, so we're gonna put it up, see how it does. This is going to be the first powered flight with the P1B1 Sky Voyager. I have 150 wines in it, two times stretch. <laughs> it got to a prop fold. Okay, so 150 is not too much by a long shot. Got a slight breeze this way. Looks like I was fighting a breeze with my down and right thrust. Didn't get around yet on the typical um, way I want to launch and fly this. Be with a uh, as a true rubber powered free flight. In other words, I didn't touch the radio on that flight. So with my controls at neutral, um, with my down and right thrust, I want to trim the model to where it does the power phase of the uh, flight and the cruise. So right climb, left glide as a true rubber powered free flight. And then to be able to take over and fly it as a um, radio controlled thermal glider. This is the second flight. I have two loops of eighth inch tan super sport rubber. Lubed up, 200 um, winds in it, two times stretch wind. Fighting the breeze. Okay. It is now 45 degrees out. I'm not sure if that temperature will affect the performance of the rubber motor. I got 400 winds in this bird. I'm ready to see it fly. All right, I think it's time to put some serious wines in this thing. It's not doing anything silly. Didn't even make it to the prop folding on that one. Again, I have serious questions about the rubber performance in the uh, in this temperature. I like the turn, but I took the down thrust out, so that should climb better. I have two loops of eighth inch tan super sport rubber with 650 winds with two times stretch wind. Pretty sure the rubber's not performing very well this cold. Try it again with the amount of wraps I have left in this. I would say without a doubt that rubber is not performing in the cold.
Murphy's Law. <laughs> Good, you can unwind. If there's a fence or a tree or a building, you're gonna hit it. Yeah, that is not turning very fast at all. Eight hundred and forty wines, and I ran out here. Did not give it time to cool off. I'm using a radio, just rudder. Make that turn, stay out of the tree, it's nice. So, yeah, that's 44 second flight, 840 wines. There's no way that rubber's producing in the cold. It's my timer here, nice feature. See how many wines is left in it. <sighs> the other part of it is if the rubber's not releasing energy, I'm also not getting the torque. So like I said, I maintain my right turn. No down thrust, but my right thrust. And over by them trees, I it was on the downwind leg. Um, breeze is coming from that way. I gave it rudder to save it from the trees. Otherwise, that was flown as a free flight. So yeah, that that was not what I would expect out of. 840 wines, two loops of eighth inch tan, two rubber, but got to see it fly. It doesn't do anything silly. It's uh, very well behaved. Um, looks like my, the amount of um, authority my tail surfaces have is nice. I can influence it, make, make my turns. I could hold a little bit of up elevator to really float it in a thermal I could push it down to uh, come back from downwind so pretty successful test of the P1B1 Sky Voyager we'll have to wait for some warm weather apparently the reason I talk about right thrust is I am setting up a right climb left glide pattern so i have slight bit of stab stabilizer tilt so that should lift the rear to the right of the airplane in the glide and the theory is the um, right thrust on the propeller will overcome that that's a um, glide phase adjustment and I do not want to use the rudder for this uh, versus this right thrust because then it wouldn't glide to the left so that's how you set them up right thrust for right climb stab tilt so it lifts tail to the left in the glide right climb left glide for these flights I've been winding in the house, here's my winder setup for the um, Sky Voyager. Simple to make up, just quarter by inch and three quarter wood. Clamp it to 
whatever you need to clamp it to. Have this pin here. Use a little piece of heat shrink and piece of 6,000 spider wire so I don't lose the pin. But I decided not to there. Let's wind this thing up. It's going for a thousand winds. Here's what's left of the rubber motor. It blew. So that proves another thing. It can take a blown up motor. There's the rest of the motor down in there. So I'll have to disassemble the plane, get it out from the rear end or push something through to get it out. But could not put a thousand winds in uh, that rubber. There it is. Balled up mess in there. I took the back of the uh, plane off. Nothing else. This um, gives real good justification for why not to glue this all together. How would you get this mess out of there if you glued it together? Because this is a mess. It's tight. Just going to probably take off when I get it out. There we go. Hold that loop right there. <laughs> she got pretty hard. Then she blew. No way you would get this out from this end. Time to make a new motor. Thank goodness for the radio. Took over on rudder. Now let's see the glide. Okay, that was two 10 inch loops of 3 16 rubber, three times stretch wind. Um, it was, I think it was 350 wines. That's definitely not the right rubber for this plane. I only did that to get enough power to get a climb in this uh, colder weather. It um, doesn't fit the fuselage. It, uh, the rubber is, the knots form are binding a little bit in the fuselage. 